waiting in your waiting room. Is there a little thing? It'll be on the top, even even after it's been a minute or so. We're a we're an Apple, a Google, a Google Meet school, so we're not a Zoomer. Um, okay, so there are a couple of things for poultry that are important to understand. Poultry judging is traditionally, in the past several years, not even looking at live birds, okay? You don't see the animals. So it's basically a chicken meats contest, okay? But it's also eggs. So we are taking a look at the chicken itself. We're grading the chicken. We are doing oral reasons on four carcasses of turkeys. And we are um, grading full carcasses and parts. Really great stuff out there. If any of you have been doing livestockjudging.com, there are actually classes of turkeys on there now. There are parts identification. There are um, different things that you can go to for eggs. But probably the most challenging one to really work with is candling because it's hard to to be able to transfer that into something that the kids can look at so the contest has traditionally been at the beginning of the school year but we were just talking earlier about the fact that it's going to be in april this year um, we're going to be at monroe fairgrounds uh, evergreen state fairgrounds and that I think is gonna open up some windows for people because you're gonna be able to get there um, and, and train a team throughout the year. The contest starts out with the grading section. We have not had classes one, two, and three in the past because those have been live birds. We are looking at the potential to have live birds this year. There will be different classes of live birds. There will be a keep cull class using broilers. So which ones do you keep? Which ones do you get rid of? There will be a placing class with past production hens. And there will be a set of oral reasons on those hens. So one of the things, if everything goes through um, our CDE review, we looked at adding those sections. We haven't been able to have them in the past because we've been at a fair. And so you really can't bring the birds in that day and they don't have birds that they want, you know, so it was really kind of awkward. Um, but what we did was, was good at the fair, the other parts of it. So to match nationals as closely as possible, we're looking at adding that in this year. That would be something if you're interested in doing the contest to just really pay attention to what comes out of the um, FFA board of directors, if they do approve that to make sure that, that you know what you're, you need to be prepared for. I myself am not prepared for that part of it. We've never had to, since I've been doing this contest, do live birds. So that's something that I'm gonna be learning about too. And um, some of the schools that have gone back to nationals will kind of have, you know, they'll, they'll have a little bit better understanding of that part of it. So we want to be sure that maybe we'll do a training or something of it later on in the year. I think that would be a really uh, useful thing. So classes one, two, and three are your birds, uh, both egg producers and meat birds. Then we go into class four, which is grading. In grading, you are grading either full carcasses or you are grading parts of birds. No, it, it typically is chicken. Typically is chickens. Um, and what you're looking for is your grading criteria on that particular portion. In your Dropbox, I included a guide that goes through all of the different things that you look for in grading. Um, I'm going to try one more time to plug it in and see if anything goes better. Okay. 
just keeps flashing on and off. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's try it. So we can keep the zoomer open. I think my see if it works on mine. Okay. There we go. Oh, kind of. Gosh, can we pull that thing down? Uh, no, there's no screen. But. Maybe. Ooh. Look at you. Some lights for you. Okay. This is the carcass grading. And if you have kids who can kind of monitor different specifics of these carcasses. This is probably the easiest grading that there is. This is not like quality grading or yield grading a beef carcass. This is much more simple. So what you're looking at, and typically when we go to the contest, we get two to six pound birds. That's usually what we have. Sometimes they're bigger, but most of the time not. You're looking at, first of all, bare places on the carcass. So how big is an exposed piece of flesh? So we look at the skin coverage of the animal as the first priority. So we look here, we've got areas that are exposed um, and it's based on size. So I kind of use my fingernail you know, like, okay, this is about a half an inch. This is about an inch. And if you can kind of monitor that, you can kind of size it up to be able to say how big the exposed area is. One of the places that always gets exposed is the front end of the breast, because that's your evisceration cut where you actually are cutting the neck away from the animal. And there is a certain allowance for an evisceration cut that really is never well explained, but you do see some exposed flesh there and it's acceptable. Then we go to our three different qualities. A quality, you can have a quarter inch exposed on the breast or a half inch if you have a bigger bird, an inch and a half exposed on other parts. So on the thigh, there could be an inch and a half opening on the flesh and it's still a grade A bird. So learning those, those specific numbers is important. On B, on all parts, if a third of it, up to a third of the flesh is exposed, it's a B quality animal. And then C, no limit. So to have an, a non-gradable carcass is really tough. And when I say that, it's really hard to actually get that non-gradable piece because really non-grable means you're missing a chunk of meat. So if you see a gutted breast or a chunk ripped out of a leg or a thigh, that's really the only time you're gonna have a non-gradable carcass. Other than that, you just have A, B, and C quality. For A's, you can have one disjoint and you can be missing the flippers, the very tips of the wings. Um, you can also, be missing the tail even with the body. So an A carcass doesn't need to have a wingtip, doesn't need to have a tail, and can have a quarter inch exposed piece on the, the breast and up to an inch and a half on the thigh. Then we get into B. And in B, you can have two disjointed or you can have one non-protruding broken and one disjointed. Um, one non-protruding, uh, that's the same thing. Yep. And then wings, you can be missing that middle part with the radius and the ulna. So you can be missing the second part of the wing. Um, and you can be missing the base of the tail halfway up to the hip. 
So when you look at the butt end of the chicken, you can be missing up to that much of its tail. For a C quality, you can be missing an entire wing. But if you're missing an entire leg, that is meat loss. So understanding this is probably the hardest part of the contest because you have to go through and make sure the kids understand those different components. Also realize if they're off one, they still get some points, okay? But there's kind of a barrier here. Non-gradable is here. If it's non-gradable and they put in a C, they don't get any points. So there's a barrier between non-gradable and C. So that is the specific things for a full carcass. But at our state contest, we actually also do parts as gradable. And I went through and tried to find information on grading parts in all the wonderful references that are out there, and I couldn't find it. So I made one up. So I put together your disjoints, and you notice it still says meat loss on that third column. That's really the only time you're going to get a non-gradable part is when you're missing meat. So a kid could do this contest, you could say, put in, you know, whatever you think it is, just to get them started. And if you had them keep it in that ABC range, for most of the cases, it's probably going to be good. They're probably still going to get at least one point somewhere, um, just to get them started. So that is also available for you on your drive. The thing that I was starting out at... was this Kentucky 4-H poultry one. And uh, this is in your drive for you. This year at the state contest, if we can get them, we are going to put the birds in shackles before they've been laying on a plate on the table. At nationals, they use shackles. I've got a source up by our area that I think I'm gonna be able to get some shackles. And when a leg is out of the shackle, that means it's disjointed. Okay, so that's something to pay attention to. So you've got your disjointed leg. It goes through here and really explains all that exposed flesh. It's got that chart that I was looking at. It's got the, the cut examples here and here, um, the tail end. See if I could find a good one of that. So you can see the disjoint there. This goes through and very thoroughly describes the grading process. And that's probably the one thing that in this contest is the most challenging for the kids. It's also important to understand because when you're looking at the the placing class, the placing class just happens to be turkeys. There's absolutely no difference between grading a turkey and a chicken, just its size. So the cuts can be a little bit larger, but you have to do oral reasons on them. So when they're doing their oral reasons, they want to describe what place or what grade the carcass is, and they want to tell us why it's that place. So if it's an A carcass, it has sufficient flesh cover, sufficient meat cover, that's good. Is it like livestock and horse where you place them and you talk about pairs or mm -hmm. you just have to explain it to them? You, you talk about pairs and compare them, okay. but it's still closer to the traditional orals that we were all used to. In fact, when I started explaining to them that sometimes teachers go in and they, you know, my alignment of this class of turkeys is they go what so if a kid is giving a good set of reasons and describes the placing um, the grade why they graded that way and if there are two that have the same grade why one placed over the other they're probably going to get a pretty good score so this is a great oral reasons to start on because it's very kind of regimented in how they do it, uh, very formatted. Here's that cat on the tail. This is your bee carcass, 
where it goes halfway between the tail and the hip. And here's a C where it goes over halfway. This doesn't seem as like objectionable as live animals either. No. Yeah, it's really, like I said, you learn that chart. Oh, that's got one disjoint. Yeah. That's still an A, okay? Disjoint and a non-broken or two disjoints, okay? And, and this is something that, again, it's really a fun one to do because there are rules, but they're not impossible to learn. And if you have some of these references, it makes it much easier. Okay. So then the next part of the contest is our eggs. And when we go into egg grading, there's two types of egg grading that you do. If you have any poultry farms in your area, they are typically glad to get rid of their crap eggs. But you have to make that connection and explain to them why you're doing it. Not that you're saying, oh, your eggs are crap but to teach kids about what to do. Um, the, you know, obviously with our climate nowadays, everybody's super nervous about that. So just make sure you're covering your bases and explaining to them that you're trying to teach kids what is objectionable and why they wouldn't have those in the, the store. Yes. Yeah. A lot of your kids may even raise chickens at home too, where they can bring in like a day after Thank you so much. Yeah. They just start laying and they find as kids all the time bring in something like that's what this egg looks like. Yeah. Yeah, playing. absolutely. Yeah. Calcium deposits. Um the the one thing that you do need to get is some type of candler. And with the powerful flashlights that are out there, you can easily even do that with a flashlight in a dark room. Um, because you are gonna want to look at the in, inside of the egg too. They used to have shell, open shell eggs where they'd crack open the egg and lay it on the counter. But be, I think because of the length of the contest and stuff, that was just too unreliable. So big things about these different ex external problems with eggs. We could see stains. Um, we could see dirt. We could see a weird shape. We could see a rough texture, which is a calcium deposit buildup. We could see ridges. We could see shell thickness. Um, you know, that lighter color on the egg kind of almost looks blue is gonna be a thin part. And then there's these things called body checks. And body checks are probably the only hard thing to identify because it kind of looks like it's got a little belt in the middle of the egg. Because what happened is somewhere in there that egg broke and the hen fixed it. So this is a great reference to use. So it goes through and it talks about cleanliness, talks about all this stuff, the checks. There's a, that looks like a I know some of them are just super weird. And there's like a thin spot right there, kind of a really unique thing to look at. And then it talks about how to candle for interior quality. So you can look at A's, double A's, um, B's. And that's a fun part of the contest too. So there's no open egg grading. No there's open no egg grading. That's not part of it. So I've got in here the old card and the plan is for this year to use um, judging card. So it's got in here that carcass grading, it's got the placing class, it's got your interior and exterior qualities. And here's something kind of weird, classes eight and nine, you use the same 10 eggs. So you go and look at egg one and you say, okay, here's the problem with egg one, it's checked. Checked means a crack, okay? A checked egg is gonna be a non-gradable egg. So you'd go up here and mark non-gradable. So those two classes are connected on the card. Then you've got boneless and bone in parts, and you're looking for defects and problems with those. Most of it makes sense, coating voids, weird colors. The one that's kind of unique at, at contests will use marriage and will just basically stack two chicken nuggets on top of each other because sometimes that's pretty hard to find. 
So if you see two chicken nuggets stacked on top of each other, it's a marriage, even though they aren't breaded together, but that's what we do to make it look right. There is a knowledge test and there is parts ID. Did they use the old national test last three years? Last three years, national test and in your thingy, I put the last three years for you. So you can actually um, start off right away with those. Intelliprep has a great reference with the different parts with the further processed materials. You can get this and they have smaller ones for the kids to use, the bigger ones. They've even got some of the stuff on grading, but the stuff on grading isn't 100% what we use in the state. So I double check that against that chart I gave you because that chart I gave you is what we use as a reference for the state, okay? Um, what else do I have here? Oh. This is awesome. This here goes through and shows, if it boots up, some different birds and why they're placed the way they are. And it's got a placing class with orals. And I also put together a very simple oral reasons format. I did it traditional, not the newer method because that's how I like to start my kids out because it makes sense. Once they know a traditional oral reason, then doing it more advanced type, uh, throwing in more adjectives is super easy, okay? If you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. We're, we're here to help. We would love to have 40 teams. Oh, and your test bank's right here too. The way I set it up, first page, then do it double-sided, and it gives you the answer and where it came from in a national reference book. So if you do it double-sided, it all lines up and you can use it as uh, cards, whatever. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hi, Anetta. Oh, she left. Say hi there real fast. Yeah. How about this? Oh, how about this? How about this one? Ah. It looks good. I agree. 